Hey folks, welcome back. Well, this is um, got a uh, this pickup's got a little bit of a rough, uh, <clears throat> sort of a rough start. It starts up real good, but it it kind of um, uh, it's hard to explain. We'll we'll get in we'll get into it a little bit. Um, but it it logs a a, a P1280 fault code, um, and the service engine soon light stays on. I don't know for about 30 seconds or so and then the service engine suit light goes out and then it starts to uh, run a little better and um, so we're gonna figure out it's got something to do with the ICP sensor and but we're gonna figure out what's uh, going on with that but first let me just uh, you know show you what's what this thing's doing oh and I, I mentioned it, it'll actually uh, log the code even before you attempt to start it. as soon as you turn the key on it'll log the code and but let me show you what's going on Okay, this thing is uh, warmed up right now, um, and it doesn't matter whether it's warm or cold, it does the same thing. It's just worse when it's cold as far as uh, how rough it runs. So anyways, we uh, turn the key on, we got service engine soon, wait to start. It's going to go off, and we'll go ahead and just crank and start this. You can see it's not too bad. But watch what happens when that, and, and I'll stop talking, watch what happens when that service engine soon light goes out. I don't know if you can <clears throat> hear the tone change. I'm not sure if that if the camera picked that up or not, uh, but it did change a little bit, you know. And now it'll, you know, it sounds runs pretty good. Well, let's hook the scanner up to it and see what's uh, happening. Okay, we're going into the powertrain control module. First, we'll just go in and read the read the code. Okay, there's our 1280, and our light is still out, but it's still gonna this code's still gonna remain in there. But we can clear it. And yes, with Ford, you can clear the fault codes with the engine running. I do it all the time. Um, go back in here. Okay, now we don't have it, so it's it's gone now. Won't return. So now we're going to go ahead and read data stream. We will choose. What we've got going on here is we've got the ICP uh, pressure PSI. It's this is the same one here, but I think since I've figured out this, I've always kind of thought maybe one was desired and the other one was actual, and I pretty much confirmed that. It just doesn't say that. It just you can see it says they both say the same thing: Inje injector control pressure PSI or injector control pressure PSI, but it doesn't say desired or anything like that. And then we want our ICP voltage, and then we want our regulator right here. Um, so you can see what we got going on here um, because there's not two sensors so there obviously can't be two readings and all that stuff so everything uh, you know looks good from here alright so what we're going to do is I'm gonna shut this thing off just like it is now um, with the with this still up. You know, it's gonna go NA for a second when we shut the key off. Then when we turn the key back on, um, then we will. Uh, I'll sh show you what's what's going on. So let's shut the key off. Okay. Now we'll turn the key back on. Okay. See how this is right here? It's reading this 12 or the voltage like this. After eventually, that's going to 
going to go back down to zero. And then this is, I think, our desired going on right there. But there it goes. Well, there it goes. So now what I find interesting is obviously our service engine soon light is, is on. I mean, you know, it will turn off eventually. There it goes, you know, and it'll, it'll still start and run right now. And that's what I want to go through here. Um, because just by turning the key on and not starting it, We got our 1280 code, so let's go in here. Now let's just go ahead and um, uh, clear the memory. Okay, go back in here. No DTC. Okay, go to read data stream. And we'll bring these back up. Uh, Okay, so all that looks good. ICP voltage, you know, that should be about about what, what it should be reading at rest right here, you know, 0.24-ish, 0.25. So that's pretty close there. You'll, uh, IPR regulator will read about that 1484 all the time at rest. Uh, we're not gonna cycle the key. We're just gonna go ahead and start this thing right up. Starts good. Nice, nice and smooth. Now I did log this fault just because the voltage dropped for a second. Everything is is normal and all that stuff. No service engine soon light. And then, uh, you know, so like I said, this is all looking normal and everything. We'll go back over here to read fault code and it should not be there. It's only when you first turn the key on now We'll go back into the read data stream and then we'll uh, okay now I'll go ahead and shut it off I guess I'd like to retry there we go. See what was up at 12? I've seen that up to about 21 was the highest, and that was when it was colder. So this one, right, this PID right here is obviously the one that we're dealing with actual reading. So we got something funky with the reading, but we'll go back in here to this fault code. And you see our 1280s back. So just as soon as you turn the key on, we get this 1280 fault. And it happens for, you know, a little while until, um, so I don't know if we've got a kind of a lazy ICP sensor or if we got some wiring issues or something like that. It's pretty consistent to, um, it's always new in it. So, um, we'll just keep on going and try to figure out, you know, um, the one thing I want to show you, uh, so we're going to go back in here. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether we, well, let's just go ahead and clear the fault code. Do the same thing we did before. We'll start this thing up. See, no service engine soon light, same thing. Uh, go back here, read data stream. Oops, went too far. Okay, just like we want to do. What we're gonna do is gonna unplug the ICP sensor and then I'll show you what, what happens here.
Hey, you can see that it's, it's went back in the 750. That's what the PCM just wants to, and it's trying to control the RPM with just using the IPR and doing its best that it can. You know, obviously now our service engine soon lights back on, but even though plugging that thing back in, um, we're still showing the desired in that second PID right here. Now it all changed and went back. Now it's actually using the ICP and then you see our light went off. So we got something going on with not making a decent connection with the wiring or something like that or a lazy ICP sensor. Um, like I said, I just you know had run into this particular problem and I wanted to bring you along with doing this. And um, so yeah, let's keep on going. Well, one thing I did is I, right, since it was real quick, quick and easy, as I took the ICP sensor out of this pickup, which is less than a year old uh, ICP sensor, um, and I knew it was good. So, okay, so I went in here, <clears throat> turned the key on, put that other uh, ICP sensor from the other pickup in here. Um, we've got the same code reading. I don't know what this really all means i don't see them do that too much but uh we'll have to figure out but one thing is is that i know that uh just turning this this key on as the service engine soon light went out immediately or you know faster than it did before so let's go ahead and uh we'll turn this off turn the key off i mean turn this back on okay <clears throat> we're immediately getting the same readings the service engine soon light already went out let's turn it off again Okay, and then we'll go ahead and crank it. <clears throat> Readings are pretty good. No service engine soon light. And no DTCs. Okay. So this ICP sensor is obviously just lazy at its readings um, this ICP sensor is only about three weeks old I replaced it we did a lot of other work to this pickup I have another video out about we had oil getting or fuel getting into or oil getting into the fuel because of the leaking bad ejector seals anyways you can check that video out if you want to but um, <clears throat> prior to that I had this thing just died and I came out and I unplugged the ICP sensor. It started right up and um, I went and bought a new one and I just bought it from Napa just because they're literally out my door across the alley. Um, but a prime example of why you want to get something like this from Ford. Uh, I don't know what's going on. They used to cost about $150 or whatever. That would be my cost. And then about a year and a half ago, and this was more than a year and a half ago, and then all of a sudden they were around $115. Um, you know in this day and age when something's a lot less priced, they're cutting their costs somewhere. And then they they were getting, a, you know, I had like two of them that were bad, and then um, started getting them from Ford again, and then I happened to look, you know, if, if I need it right quick, you know, the Ford dealership's not close. We'll give one a try. Well, they were back to being $150-ish. And then, recently when I bought this one, this was about 115, 17, whatever it was, they're back to being cheap again, wherever the heck they went at before. And that thing is not functioning right. So that was a quick and easy test. Um, so anyhow, get it from Ford if you can. Um, or go online and get them from like thoroughbred or riffraff or or some places like that that you know but um aside from that if uh, one thing to check you know is obviously your wiring i've got to clean this up and and get it all you know tied back together real good um but your wiring uh through your plug 
down there. Now see how this got a bunch of tape and I actually got a rubber uh, heater hose uh, wrapped around it because I had fixed wires at one point because they were rubbing on the valve cover and a few times that wire that's the uh, signal wire uh, which is I think it's this purple purple with a white stripe or violet with a white stripe or something like that that wire right there sometimes it's down there on the bottom and I've seen them rub through and start rubbing on the valve cover causing other issues with uh, ICP sensor reading you'll get that 1280 code possibly or you won't get no code but you get it running like crap I mean these things will do that um, so anyways this thing is uh, fixed now I just got to get a new well I don't know this is my dad's pickup so I might give him that ICP sensor <laughs> I won't do that at least I won't charge him for it if I do leave it in here uh, I ain't gonna charge this one is going back to Napa under a warranty deal or whatever I'm fed up with that that crap um, you know People will pay more money for parts if they know that they're good parts. I'm tired of these part stores and, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, trying to make, play the game or, or beat everybody else and who's got the cheapest, cheapest prices and all that stuff. This isn't Walmart, folks. But anyways, um, hopefully this, uh, you know, helped you out some. Um, you know, basically what, you know, we were losing the signal coming out we weren't losing any voltage we we're getting voltage you know to it um this is all just done by the scanner but you could verify it actually by back probing this uh, plug but we were losing the signal that wasn't you know the P pcm wasn't getting its signal from this sensor to the pcm and it was losing it somewhere for us it wasn't losing it it just was, the sensor itself wasn't operating like it's supposed to so you know you might have to you know trace wires and and follow that kind of stuff see if you're getting your signal and stuff out um if you've got same or similar issues so anyways um hopefully this helped you out thanks for watching